I want to have a little banner at the top with our search input. The way I'm going to do this is by grabbing a group, putting it under the header. We can name this group large search. This is going to be our wireframe so we can see it and I just want it to be aligned to parent. We can stretch it all the way across and say fit height to content. So this will grow to fit whatever content we put within it. I'm going to grab an image and put it there. I want to put it in the center, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to stretch it out to fill the full group. I'm going to upload an image that I got from Pexels. I edited this image so that it had this nice gradient on it. I am going to give it a min width of 1200 and then a fixed height of 400. Giving it a min width of 1200 might seem a little odd, but let me show you why. Let me actually go ahead and remove that min width and then we can look at our responsive filter. At 1200, this is how it looks. And as we get smaller, we see that this image is squished and its proportions are all warped, its aspect ratio is messed up, and it doesn't look good. If we add back our min width and preview it, we can see that parts of the image is just cut off. So it's still a comprehensible image. It still looks nice, but and the user never has to know that there was more to the image than what they're seeing. Okay, let's add in our search box now. I'm going to drag a group in the center over here. And this is going to be a row that is center aligned. I wanted to stretch the entire group and I don't mind leaving it with a min height of 95. I could be being a little bit more particular, but I think we are okay. Here, I'm going to add a group. Let's make it bottom aligned, and I want it to be a row as well. This is going to stretch across max width of 600. I could be a little bit smarter with the max width I choose, leave it as a breakpoint, but I'm cool with this right now. This is just so that when someone has a really long page, it doesn't get stretched out too much. Now, I want this to kind of look like an input, even if it isn't. So I'm actually going to give it a flat color and a roundness of 16. Now that it's looking a little better, we can preview this in the responsive editor. At this size, this is how it looks. Our image is getting cropped, but this is still remaining in the center. And we can see all the way down to mobile where it gets squished, but it's going right up to the edge. And we don't want that. We still want some padding. So on this group container, I'm going to add 32 pixels of left and right padding. I also want to rename this group search just for convenience. Okay, now we can start actually adding the elements that a user would type into, starting with an input that I'm going to drop into group search. I want this to just expand the entirety of the group, and we can make it a fixed height of 48 which is what group search is now. It's going right up to the edge, so I'm actually going to go to our group search by clicking reveal in the elements tree. And I'm going to add some padding on the left and right. 16 pixels should do. Okay, we have our input here, but we need some sort of button or icon to actually trigger the search action. So I'm going to choose this magnifying glass icon in our yellow color, align it in the center and make it 
32 by 32. Looking good. I just want to go back to our input and remove our border. So it just blends right in with our group. Now let's actually add some functionality. We don't want it to actively be filtering. We only want it to filter. We only want the search to kick in once they click this button. To do that, we need to somehow store the value of the search. We're going to do that using custom states. This is a temporary search. It only lasts for a bit, and that's why custom states are perfect. I'm going to call this search query. This is going to be a text and it's just going to store whatever the user searched for. I'm going to have them search for an address. Now that we've decided that we want them to search for an address, we can actually set this content equal to an address. And I want to prevent the enter key from submitting. I only want this to submit. Okay, let's add in a workflow. When this button is clicked, I want to set the state of our group search, which is search query equal to our input search for an address's value. Since this is returning an address, and search query is a text, we want to say formatted address, which should align perfectly with these listings addresses. Let's preview this. We can see our nice banner over here. Theoretically, we would have a heading and a subtitle, but I think this is good for now. I'm going to just copy paste this address in there. It's already formatted. We can click search and if we look on our group search we can see that this is the value that our search query holds but it's not doing anything with the repeating group so let's set that up we want to check if the address contains our group searches search query this means that the address doesn't need to be exact. They can search for a city or a street. And as long as this listing's address contains that city, for example, it will show. But if we look at it, we can see that we have a problem. Let's see why nothing is showing up. Right now, our data source is set for a search for listings where the address contains the group searches search query. But currently, we aren't searching for anything, so that search query is empty. What we need to do is go over here and click Ignore Empty Constraints. When the search query is empty, we want to pretend like this constraint on the ad address doesn't even exist. We can check this out, and we are seeing our listings again. I'm going to copy this address, paste it in and that's what we see but now i want to clear my search i want to see all of the houses again we need to reference our custom state to do this we want to say when group searches search query is not empty when there's some value it means that something has been searched for then this icon is not going to be this search icon, but it's actually going to be this close icon. Let's test this out. I'm going to just type in that address again, and we see it turns into an X. But this is still searching for it. This is still setting the custom state equal to that. That's not what we want. So we need to use only when conditions. Only when group searches, search query is empty. When this condition is true, it looks like a magnifying glass, like a search icon, and that's when we want to set the state. Otherwise, 
when the search query is not empty, we want to leave the state blank, revert it to its default value, which is blank, and then we want to reset the data of our group search, which is going to clear our input. Okay, let's search for this 500 Saratoga Avenue. We can click search, it turns into an X. We can click it and our input gets cleared and our repeating group is back to how it was. What if I want to filter by more things such as beds and square footage and price so I really get listings congruent with what I want? Well, in our next video, we are going to cover filters.